Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I'm uh, just hanging out with my little boy here, Diddy. Diddy, come here, buddy. And I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Of course, I'm just hanging out with Diddy, and of course, Dixie is right down here, who normally will climb up me as well. I mean, these guys are so absolutely incredible. Come on, bud, there you go. Here's some treats for you, baby boy. So we've been thinking, things are changing here at the Reptarium. We've been talking about the fact that we're probably gonna keep, you know, a slow number of people, 25, 30 people per hour and stuff like that. And we wanna kind of evolve to something different, right? So sometimes really cool things come out of really bad things like the COVID, right? And basically what that means is we wanna have a different experience for people. And one of the things that we really wanna do is actually have 15 separate hours each weekend, because we're open five hours per day, and we want each one of those hours to have a special event. So if you book an hour, you can certainly come run around and do all the things that you want to do, but also there'd be something cool, like a Diddy and Dixie experience, where uh, we'd have them out like this. Now, don't get me wrong, Diddy and Dixie's gonna be out every hour, but they're gonna do special things on a specific hour, and we want each hour to be something completely different. These guys are getting so good at the clicker thing going back. We're eventually going to be able to just click once, they'll go flying back. Again, it's all about experiences. So throughout this vlog, I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the ideas of the kind of next evolution in the Reptarium and how we can bring these amazing experiences to you. That way, if you want to see, say, Lucy eat at 6 o'clock on Saturday, you can actually go on the calendar, book that, and uh, maybe you want 5 o'clock will be the Diddy and Dixie experience, or 7 o'clock will be the Elvis experience, or Ivy, or whatever the case is. You could choose your time slot. And hey, you can book more than one time slot, or you can come back more times if you, whatever, you haven't seen a particular event. So uh, I'll talk more about that as we go, but we have a lot of work today, so let's just get right to it. That possible sunset clutch actually hatched out. And the one thing I didn't actually even mention was the fact that the male was actually a scaleless head that was possible had sunset. So you can see right here, you can see that's a scaleless head animal. And of course the super is solid scaleless. So there's a uh, one beautiful example right here. And I'm just gonna go through these and see how many scaleless heads there actually are. And you can see on this one right here even that it's just a little bit of missing scales. That's actually still a scaleless head. You can have just a little missing scales or you could have like almost an entire head scale is another one. So, so far our ratio has been good. There's been three out of three so far have been scaleless heads. So we may not have hit the sunset, but we at least hit the scaleless head stuff. This one is just a complete normal. You can see no abnormalities whatsoever when it comes to scalation on the head. So that's a normal. Uh, here is definitely another really cool scaleless head animal right here. You can see all those missing scales on the head. And again, that's an incomplete dominant mutation that I brought out of Africa many years ago. Proved it out to be scaleless. Looks like a normal, a normal. And then the last one here, yep, another scaleless head right here. So you can see all those missing scales. Uh, and again, when you breed these together, one in four on average would be completely scaleless. Now we haven't produced scaleless for a while and I don't even know if we're going to, to be totally honest with you, because they do need a little more care, kind of like the silky bearded dragons. And uh, we just kind of stayed away from them, but we do still produce some scaleless head stuff. So these are actually scaleless that are possible, possible head for sunsets. Down in the dungeon, and that means one thing. And this is actually a really cool animal here. I, this first time this girl has ever laid eggs. And I produced her about three years ago and raised her up. So I'm pretty excited about this clutch of eggs. This is a ghost spinner. So this is a recessive hypo, then it's a pinstripe and it's a spider. And she's actually bred to a lemon blast ghost. So she produce some really cool babies here. So let's just go ahead and see what mama has going on here. Again, first time clutch, all in all pretty good. There is one little slugger here, but I tell you what, not bad at all. So let's just go ahead and get these eggs in here. Again, there was one little slug. I'm gonna remove this top little egg here. These are pretty fresh, so they come off pretty good. So that's awesome. Two, four, five good eggs, one little slugger. Not bad for a first time female. And like I said, it's always special when you remember when you produced the animal and it was like, oh my God, it's so cool. And now you finally come full circle and now she's got a clutch of eggs and there should be some really good banger animals out of there. Again, a bunch of hypo stuff, hypo pins, hypo spinners, hypo lemon blasts, hypo, all kinds of stuff. Regardless, it's a cool clutch and I couldn't be happier to start my day that way. This next clutch is a pretty simple clutch to be told 
totally honest with you. It looks like she doesn't have all her eggs wrapped up either. So I'm gonna just steal this one egg before we even move on right here. Big egg too. But this is actually a het ghost female, just bred to an extreme banana. That extreme banana is just kind of a reduction of pattern. Works really well with things like pinstripes and a few other things. So we could get a whole combination of cool like bananas, extreme bananas, stuff like that. It looks like a beautiful clutch. Just gonna kind of slowly work this girl off her eggs. See what we can do here, pull these eggs off. And we'll go ahead and get these in here. It looks like we've got a couple pretty good poo bags here. And again, what ends up happening, obviously you can see the difference of the size of this egg compared to this egg right here. You're gonna have a much smaller baby, but at the same time, they should hatch fine. I find it weird when we have clutches like this. It's not that common that you have such a huge variety of sizes. You've got these two monster eggs here, a couple other eggs. Then you've got a kind of mid-sized egg, a couple smaller eggs. It's just kind of weird how that works. So in this clutch, when it does hatch, each one of these eggs is gonna hatch a different size baby. This might be a 75 or 80 gram baby, whereas this might be a 35 or 40 gram baby, but all of them typically do well and stuff like that. So regardless, we have two, four, six, eight, nine perfect eggs. Uh, well, seven perfect eggs and two boob eggs, but they'll hatch out completely fine. Certainly another experience is this experience right here where uh, you can actually get out and mess around with Ivy, take pictures. Uh, definitely, I think, again, we might take her out more often, but to have a special event where you know at this particular hour, you're gonna get a chance to kind of interact with Ivy like this, and it's just absolutely incredible. I mean, look at this girl. It's the most insane experience you can ever imagine. And, uh, you know, again, just kind of thinking how we can fill each one of those hours with something special. Now, again, remember, you know, the rest of the time you walk around, you look at everything, you do everything you always do. There's just maybe a special event that lasts five minutes, 10 minutes, sometimes maybe even 15 minutes. But we want you guys to get the, the majority of the zoo in as well, but maybe something really cool that you can look forward to. And again, on the calendar, each hour will have a specific event so you can book in advance. So uh, I don't know, just thoughts. I want to know from you guys, what, what events do you want to see? I mean, go down in the comments and let me know what specific event from the Reptarium would you want to come for for that, you know? And in the meantime, tickets are on sale at thereptarium.com. I wanted to show you guys uh, one of our latest ambassadors here at the Reptarium. This is actually, we call him Gramps. And the reason we call him Gramps is that he's pretty old. He's about 15 years old right now. This is an albino king rat snake. Uh, these guys are, are native to China and just a really cool snake. We bred these for many years and they're very interesting. A lot of times they were a little bit high strung, but you can tell Gramps has really calmed down in his old age. It's just cool because they have these kind of really keeled scales. They're really rough, very like kind of cobra like to be totally honest with you uh, and just a really long colubrid snake these guys can get up to eight nine feet long believe it or not but gramps fathered a lot of clutches in his days but he's been retired for the last two or three years and we decided it's such an interesting snake why not bring it over here to the reptarium and let people really enjoy it as much as we have for all these years so again a, a snake that you won't see too often definitely not a common snake by any stretch so kind of cool to have gramps back over here at the reptarium and hopefully people will enjoy him as much as we have the other day we actually had our first leopard gecko hatch and now now, we've got a lot. <laughs> oh my God, look at all these babies that are starting to hatch. There's about so. 24 of them, I think. 24 <clears throat> of them. This one's starting to just peek out. Look. Oh my gosh, let's take a look. Oh, and it looks like, wow, what is, oh, is that a, a, a whoop, whoop, there Everyone's it goes. Everyone's running everywhere. Everyone's good. Is this one right here, that's a Max Snow Murphy's Patternless? Yep. Oh my God, that's good. Look at the bold stripe coming out here. Wow, there's some wacky patterns. And of course, oh, yeah. uh, a bunch of the geckos just came out, but look at how cute that is, that little head. Look at how There's, cute that, that little nose poking out. Too. This one's halfway out. Oh my God, wow, they are so guys. cute. Yeah, well now we've, uh, we pretty <laughs> now much. I've gotta yeah, now I gotta figure everybody. out. Oh my God, That's I'm okay. sorry, Jessica, I'm sorry. <laughs> I gotta look at this one right here though, just cause it's, an, I, oh, I, I got, I'm a sucker for like the, the real light colored ones and so stuff that like that. that probably gonna be a super raptor. So this is a super raptor. Look yeah. at that, just basically patternless. You can see the red eyes. Oh my God, that thing is cool. And these patterns are getting really yeah. cool. So wow. So yeah, these ones are actually kind of weird, the F1. Uh -huh. So that was from a blazing blizzard to blazing blizzard. So it's oh. like, should have been all blazing blizzards. And so instead sure we got some happened. Tremper yeah. albinos. Wow, that's crazy. So as you guys can see, uh, we are in full bloom when it comes to leopard geckos. And unfortunately I messed uh, Jessica up and, uh, and let, <laughs> let all the geckos out. I've before, so I know we're, we're they go <laughs> okay good excellent so good stuff so uh these guys will get up and uh hey you know keep checking the website because i mean there's going to be tons of leopard geckos on the site this year some really good production so keep up the good work awesome
Guess what time it is? And we're gonna start with this actually albino that is het blizzard scaleless and is bred to a blizzard corn snake. Let's see what she's got going on. Beautiful snake. Look at the color on that animal right there. That is absolutely amazing. Again, this is like an albino, but it's really more like a candy cane with uh, more orange instead of the red. The real candy canes are really red, but this one's kind of orange with white on it. Very beautiful snake. And it's actually bred to this animal right here, which is a solid white snake, which is that blizzard corn snake. Absolutely wonderful. So let's see how many eggs she has. She's got two, four, six, seven good eggs. And again, this is a second clutch, so uh, that's pretty good. She's done for the year. She did really Really well for us this year. This next clutch is actually a blood red that's head snow scaleless corn snake. So this should be really cool, and it's bred to a blood red scaleless that is actually head for snow. And you can see just how absolutely incredible this. This is actually going into shed too, so it's even more beautiful when it's out of shed. So let's see how many eggs she has. I hope it's going to be a good clutch. Again, this is a second clutch. Most of the stuff we're going to pull now are going to be second clutches. And uh, again, you can see that blood red or what they call diffused corn. Really interesting kind of side pattern are a little bit muted out as they get older they turn more and more red looks like we have a little bit of a mixed bag the majority of the eggs look good but we do have a couple little sluggers here we'll take this one out this one out we'll take this one out and it looks like a couple on the other side but we'll just go ahead and start pulling the good eggs out over here putting them in the egg box these look all really good these look good and ultimately this one looks good here. So it looks like we have four or five slugs, but we also have two, four, six, eight, nine good eggs. So all in all, pretty good. Again, second clutches, the fertility isn't quite as good, but that's really a beautiful second clutch in all honesty. So she's done for the year and uh, gonna get ready for brumation here in a few months. Today I wanted to give you guys a little bit of update on my boy Beetlejuice. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that uh, he's doing really, really well. He's fattened up and, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know on a later time as far as his weight change, but boy, it's a, it's a surprising one for sure. Sure. Um, but uh, to be honest with you guys, behavior-wise, he hasn't really been coming around the way I would like him. At least in the in the rate I would like him. Now I don't know. Again, we don't want to rush anything with this dude here. But for a fact, I think we needed to sort of change up a bit of a different plan of action. My new idea is that I've noticed a lot of his behavior has been uh, sort of like almost been curious motivated and not necessarily food motivated. So like every time he sees me walking by, he sees something else. He's always sort of like at the window, sort of checking out, going, "Hmm, what's going on?" And that so like. Uh, Pretty much, I, I had seen that a number of times to think like, well, I kind of want to encourage that, obviously. Like, we all want to see him, right? You guys want to see him when you come to the Reptarium, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start every time I see him starting to get, and I want him right here. I don't mean right here, and I don't mean right here. I mean, I want him right here. So when I see him right there, I'm gonna, the moment I see it, I'm going to run, get some food, open this bad boy up, and immediately feed him. Encourage that. It positively reinforce it every time he, every time he does it. To the point where he like just like as almost you kind of see him right now where he's a little bit like interested in what we're doing. Like he sees my active movement and like ah so like uh, obviously you can tell he's certainly certainly curious. So, so we want to motivate him to be more curious. We want him to think there's no reason at all for him to think when a hand goes in there that he should run. He should just think Hand goes in there, I'm probably getting fed or, or some something to that realm. It's not gonna be anything I should be afraid of. I'm just gonna check out. I'm gonna be more curious as to what's going on. It's gonna be a really lot, a lot of fun, especially when we get that crock monitor. So especially when we get that in there, it's gonna be another one where we're gonna actually do the same thing we're doing here. Take it slowly, but really, really show you guys every little step of the way of what we're doing and how we're doing it. It's always amazing to see the evolution of the Reptarium and this kind of new birth of this new idea where I want the best experience for every single person that comes through the door. So I hope that you guys will like it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And if you did like this, uh, right here is a playlist of us building the Reptarium and all the stuff with the Reptarium. I think you guys will enjoy that. Up here, can you please support my podcast channel? It's called Checking In. On this side, you can please subscribe to this vlog channel. Turn those post notifications on. If you don't mind, have a wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.